Okay, can we start with a prayer? Thank you, Lord, for the joyous worship service. It was so good. Thank you for all those who participated and planned and worked so hard on it. We thank you for them. The choir and the musicians and the handbell folks and the children and the pastoral staff. And we thank you for them and for this church. It is a joy to be a member here. Lord, um, we were, we're getting ready to talk about something that's difficult for us. So we ask for your wisdom and guidance and we ask for understanding and patience. Bless us now as we continue reading Titus. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen from the peanut gallery. Okay, peanuts, peanuts. Okay. <laughs> A couple things. We this is in spite of what the bulletin says, we are meeting on the fourth. That's going to be our last meeting. Okay. Uh, and what we're going to do on the fourth is uh, choose what, amongst other things, we're going to end up, we're going to do the end of Titus, uh, and then we're going to select what we want to want to um, um, read for next year. Here are the suggestions uh, so far. Uh, now, the, the, the book is not closed on these suggestions, so we've got lots of time. Uh, so far, we have possibilities of, of Job, First and Second Peter, First, Second, and Third John, Hebrews, Daniel, Genesis, and the Parables of Jesus. So oh, that's a lot of we've got a, uh, and, and what we're going to do is kind of vote on them, uh, and uh, and that'll be what we do next year. Uh, but the, the the floor is not closed for nominations. <laughs> <laughs> you can even bring them on the fourth. You know, additional. Uh, desires. Um, uh, we're, we're starting to schedule for next year, right? and our new new coordinator, new staff person for it is Mark. Uh, Mark Harris, and uh, he's very enthusiastic, and he's uh, 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 he's wondering uh, if wanted to know if anybody be willing to record a one minute video or something like that about why you like to come to this class. If you would like to, just let me know, and I'll give you a name to Mark, or you can talk to Mark directly. Uh, so, who uh, are the staff liaison before Mark? Um, Jay. 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 Well, no. Um, okay. Um, that Jay was. He's retiring. Huh? Well, last year was the gent who left. Uh, and, oh, um, right. Evans. 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 Oh, that's okay. and, and Jay kind of picked up everything uh, after that. But Mark has been assigned now to adult formation, and uh, and he's uh, he's very enthusiastic about it. So, uh, okay, but today we're going to um, talk about some stuff that's hard. But I'm trying to put it in some context here for you. Uh, you will recall last week we talked about the elders and the tradition of the elders and stuff like that. I wrote about that. Uh, about uh, the function of elders. Um, and in the Roman world, you had something similar. You had uh, the most mayorum is, uh, is the term, what it's called. It's literally the tradition of the elders, the ancient tradition. It's an oral tradition that goes back to even before the founding of Rome, which was in five twenties BC or something like that. Um, and this uh, this this is the foundation of Roman law and Roman culture. It is deeply embedded in Rome, um, and um, uh, out of that los maiorum comes the notion of oikos. Oikos means house. Um, and we're going to get into that today. Uh, it's a uh, it's, it means a dwelling. Uh, but it also means more than that. Uh, it's a uh, major concept. Of the, it means it's the locus of family. Uh, and family was looked at in the Roman Empire traditionally and legally. 
as the uh, the founding is the fundamental unit of the of the Roman Empire. It was broadly interpreted. Uh, a house would include a family uh, and the servants uh, and anybody else who might be associated with, with the family, even friends, uh, slaves, uh, and clients. You have the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the social, political, economic system was this client-patron relationship. And so uh, in that, the... Um, uh, uh, you had the, uh, so a family could be a very broad, broad, uh, broad thing. And in fact, uh, uh, even the Roman Empire was sometimes, the whole Roman Empire was sometimes conceived of as the oikos. Uh, the word, the word is, uh, uh, we use it a lot. Ecumenical comes from the word oikos, but it, mm -hmm. um, but it's um, uh, it, it's a dwelling, and, and, and there are all kinds. Of, there are seven or eight different cognate words. For instance, get this now. Now, um, <coughs> oiko despotes, the house despot. <coughs> Who's the, who's the leader of the house and runs the household, uh, house manager. Um, so uh, then you have a thing called the pater familias. Uh, the, the, the word means that uh, familias is family. Uh, pater familias is, is the father of the family. This is by law and custom, but by law, the senior male uh, uh, member, the eldest male member of a house of a family. Uh, and this, in, in, the, in the family terms, this paterfamilias has absolute power over, over everybody in, involved, uh, over the children, uh, over, I mean, he has, he has power of life and death over his children, literally. Uh, so you have this paterfamilias who is extraordinarily powerful, but also has the I mean, so authority is absolute and total, uh, has a responsibility uh, for, for the family, for the care and the protection and the operation of the family. Uh, and he is the priest. Every, every um, um, uh, uh, family, every household had a, had a little worship. Uh, and uh, place of worship, and they did worship, and they had household gods, the Lares and the Penates, uh, and the and the Pater Familias was the priest of that. Now, understand, the priest is not kind of like the priest in um, uh, Roman Catholic Church. No, well, there's a pastoral function, but it, the pastoral function not comes not from being a priest, but from being the the the, the head of the household, basically. So. Uh, so there's a care function there. So we have these two, these elements having to do with Roman law and custom. And, and, and I uh, mentioned this because we're going to get into it. So, so let me read uh, from Titus 2. We're going to read all the second chapter of Titus. But as for you, teach what is consistent with sound doctrine. Tell the older men, uh, those are the Presbyterian pres case, that tell the older men to be temperate, serious, prudent, and sound in faith, in love, and endurance. Mm -hmm. Likewise, tell the older woman, Presbyterian, uh, tell the Ill older women to be reverent in behavior, not to be slanders or slaves to drink. They are to teach what is good so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be self-controlled, chaste, good manner, managers of the household, <laughs> kind, being kind, being submissive to their husbands so that the word of God may not be discredited. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity, gravity, sound speech that cannot be censured. 
Then any opponent will be put to shame, having nothing evil to say of us. Tell slaves to be submissive to their masters and to give satisfaction in every respect. They are not to talk back, not to pilfer, but, but to show complete and perfect fidelity so that in everything they may be an ornament to the doctrine of God our Savior. Mm. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, uh, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed and blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself uh, for us that we might, uh, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Declare these things I exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one look down on you. Okay, let's go to verse one. Uh, but as for you, teach what is consistent with sound doctrine. Uh, that uh, that Ugayanosan didaskale, didaskalia is what it is. Um, the sound doctrine. Didaskale is a, is a te teaching. Uh, it's doctrine. Uh, it, it, uh, it's the form of didactic mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in, in, in translated into English. Uh, and First Timothy talks about what the sound doctrine might be. First Timothy 1.18. <clears throat> now we know that the law is good if one uses it legitimately legitimately. This means understanding that the law is laid down not for the innocent, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the godless and sinful, for the unholy and profane, for those who kill their father or mother, for murders, fornicators, sodomites, slaves, trade, tra slave traders, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to the, to the sound teaching that conforms to the glorious gospel of the blessed God. Uh, which is entrusted to me. Now, see what's happened here is all the stuff that we read in Paul and in the rest of the New Testament is now reduced to doctrine, mm -hmm. sound doctrine. This is a later development, and it's a significant development uh, about the uh, about how the uh, uh, the church has evolved. You have founding issues and you have all kinds of issues. We got, we started in the beginning here uh, in chapter one with issues of appointing teachers, appointing people in charge and folks to do things. And now we're getting down to sound doctrine. This is, this is how it gets reduced. Yes. Um, um, interestingly, I, I, know, I noticed in Timothy, you read that slave traders yes. were on, on the bad list. Yes. But slaves here, it's okay to have slaves. You we'll, just can't trade them. We'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. all right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and I'm not sure about that translation. Okay. okay. Yes, mm -hmm. Jeanette. Now, in, in reading this earlier to it, it just occurred to me that he has just a little teeny bit about exonerations to men, but in relationship, kind of a whole paragraph, in relation to women uh, and the <laughs> fact that he's mentioning specific things about slave to drink, teach what they meant, it yeah. makes you think that these women maybe weren't so good that he has to have a special <laughs> message. <laughs> uh, let me let me get into that a little bit more because there is a yeah, I, I just told you about uh the 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 household and the family structure in Rome and the uh, absolute authority of the powder familiars. That's 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 how a whole society was run. Okay. Yeah. In the in the New Testament, uh, we have several texts which I'm going to read, which scholars have called household codes. Now we don't have examples of household co codes from the ancient world, but we, we do know that uh, there were unspoken codes uh, about how households should be run. Uh, in 
uh, in the New Testament, we have a number of them. This is one of them. It's one of the more brief ones, as a matter of fact. That, and this is, uh, let me read, let me start with reading them because they are very interesting. Let me start with Ephesians 5, 21 and going through 6, 9. Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is head of the church, the body of which he is the Savior. Just as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her in order to make her holy by cleansing her with the washing of water by the word so as to present the church to himself in splendor without a spot or wrinkle or anything of the kind. Yes, so that she may be holy without blemish. In the same ways, husband loves your wives as they do their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hates his own body, but he nourishes and tenderly cares for it, just as Christ does for the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, quote, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two will become one flesh, unquote. This is a great mystery and I'm applying it to Christ and the church. Each of you, however, should love his wife as himself and a wife should respect her husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother, quote, end quote. This is the first commandment with a promise, so that, quote, so that it may be well for well with you and you may live long in the land, unquote. And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling and singleness of heart as you obey Christ. Not only will while being watched and in order to please them, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Render service with enthusiasm as to the Lord and not to men and women, knowing that whatever, uh, that, that whatever good we do, we will receive the same again from the Lord, whether we are slaves or free. And masters do the same to them. Stop threatening them. For you know that both of you have the, the same master in heaven, and with him there is no partiality. And from Colossians, wives, be subject to your husbands, as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Children, obey your parents and everything, for this is your acceptable duty in the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children or they may lose heart. Slaves, obey your masters in everything, not only while being watched in order to please them, but wholeheartedly fearing the Lord. Whatever your task, put yourselves into it as done for the Lord and not for your masters. Since you know that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward, you serve the Lord Christ, Lord Christ, for the wrongdoer will be paid back for whatever has been done, and there is no partiality. Masters, treat your slaves fairly and justly, for you know that you also have a master in heaven. For the Lord's sake, accept the authority of every human institution whether the emperor is supreme or of governors as sent by him to punish those who do wrong and praise those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing right, you should silence the ignorance of the foolish. As servants of God live as free people yet do not use your freedom as a pretext for evil. Honor everybody, love the family of believers, fear God, honor the, honor the emperor. Slaves, accept the authority of your masters uh, with all deference, not only those who are kind and gentle, but also those who are harsh. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering justly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? If you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow his steps. He committed no sin uh, and no deceit was in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself 
to the one who judges justly. For he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, uh, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. From 1 Peter 3, verse, starting with verse 1. Wives, in the same way, accept the authority of your husbands, so that even if some of them do not obey the word, they may be won over without a word by their wives' conduct when, when they see the purity and reverence of their life, of your lives. Do not adorn yourselves outwardly by braiding your hair and by wearing gold ornaments or fine clothing. Rather, let your adornment be the inner self with the lasting beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in God's sight. It was in this way long ago that the holy women who hoped in God uh, used to used to adorn themselves by accepting the authority of the husbands. <coughs> Thus Sarah obeyed Abram and called him Lord. You have become her daughters as long as you do what is good and never let fears alarm you. Husbands in the same way show consideration for your wives in your life together, paying honor to the women as the weaker sex, since they also uh, they too are also heirs of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing may hinder your prayers. Okay. So it kind of says the same, the gist of, it's the same gist of many, many places in the Bible. Yeah. Can you just, yeah. Okay. Now, but this is in the, this is in the context, what we're talking about is a church who is starting to form itself as a social uh, as a social group um, uh, within the context of the Roman Empire. Understand, everybody in the Roman Empire was subordinate to somebody else. Yeah. So that was just yeah, the, 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 the fact of the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you have here are uh, in these uh, the, 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 well, let me let me read to you also. Um, this is from Ephesians. We're talking about a household now. Right? Is, that, is that also written by Paul? Letter I mean, Paul, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, okay. It's a broad interpretation of church. Ephesians two nineteen. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. This is the, the family notion, the household of God, uh, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. All right. So what you have here is this new thing. And now here it's... Uh, it's 60 years old, younger. I mean, the, the notion of church is younger than this church, far younger. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, uh, uh, and the church is, is, is establishing itself in the Roman world. Now, the Romans were a little suspicious of Eastern religions. Eastern religions didn't have the same kind of <laughs> texture and structure. They tended to be more um, I don't know, charismatic. They tended to be more uh, uh, expressive uh, than, than the religions the, the religions of the Roman Empire. You didn't, you didn't have singing and all kinds of celebratory, which you had celebrations, but there were feasts and, and sacrifices. But the Eastern religions in general were more, you know, um, driven by emotion. Right. And so the Romans were suspicious of it. And by this time, uh, by according to Acts, the, the, the church had pretty well separated itself from Judaism, which is an ancient religion, and which was pretty fairly sedate. 
And in Rome, though, that wasn't necessarily Jewish. It must have been Greek, the Greek gods. Who, what was the Roman religion before? Roman religions were were variants of the uh, of the Greek, the Greek pantheon. Yeah. Okay, uh, but also by right. this time there were in, the introduction of Eastern religions, and particularly the mystery cults. Oh, okay. uh, but there, uh, in some of these, some of these religions were orgiastic uh, and very, very spontaneous. Uh, particularly the illusion of rites, uh, the illusion fields, which, which involved drinking and all night ceremonies, and, and in fact, it got so bad that Romans tried to put a lid on it. You know. <laughs> So, but at any rate, what you have to, what you're trying to do is establish the church as a legitimate function of society. Mm -hmm. So we have these household codes. You mentioned that it was mostly about the women, and yeah, but it, it's, it, it equalizes that. But the issue is for the close household was, um, the pater familias, the, the authority figure who was the husband, the father, uh, wives, children, slaves. And by structuring the church that way, they can push the women aside. Well, that's the effect of it. Yeah. Well, the slaves too, and the children. Yeah, I mean, so right. right. Yeah. So, but so, yeah. But they can also gain recognition and acceptance right. from the society around them, right. which is what they needed to the, some degree. The last thing they needed live. was right. the authorities right. coming and putting the lid on. Yeah. And so they really wanted to be model citizens. Yeah. Even this notion of obeying the emperor. Right. Um, yeah. It's obeying just, the authorities. You also see that in Romans 13 in a much shorter form. Obey, and you see it also in Peter, I think, in the Peter. Obey the emperor, obey the authorities. Uh, follow the structure, the authority structure in the uh, in the household, in the extended family, uh, and, and do it. What you want to do is be upright citizens. Mm -hmm. Jeanette. Well, it keeps boiling around in my head that what you said about Christ and his deeds and teaching are one thing, and then that sort of matriculated into this, how do you establish a church and propel this new religion? And if you kind of separate, you can't separate the two, but if you separate the two, it makes a whole bunch more sense to me. Well, actually, what you, if you read these things, you find that this is, this is all focuses around Christ and his model, that he himself was obedient suffering unto death say. and what and what you the last thing you would want is a a uh is the notion of a rebellious religion so the model is christ who submitted <laughs> christ who submitted he did not rebel christ was not a rebel and not in the sense of of fomenting rebellion uh so uh, this th this needed to be the church needed to be a place uh, founded on the principles of Christ who died for us, where people will uh, su submit uh, and support. Hold on, Don. Hold on. Christ Jesus uh, submitted to uh, his heavenly Father. Yes. He did not submit. To, he did not. He 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 was a rebel. I mean, he he was not. Um, but he didn't. He had to submit. He didn't give Pilate, unto Caesar but, what was Caesar's, right? But um, I don't know. I mean, it seems to me he did turn everything upside down. He, he did, did turn not. everything upside down, but he didn't do it in the social way. He didn't foment revolution. Mm -hmm. well, well, but in the reading today, in the John seventeen reading today, he did um, talk to God about his submission to God, but also he says, these people are of the world and I think like that. He was relating that to other people. Oh, yes. See, what, what 
in order to survive uh, a system which had been persecuted. Understand that, that before Constantine, uh, Diocletian uh, had done a great general persecution. In, in, in terms of, uh, uh, of the Roman Empire, persecution was not widespread. Uh, it was localized mostly. There were two generate there are two elements uh, during the second half of the uh, third century. From 250 to about 310, the Roman Empire almost dissolved. It was, uh, they had emperors fighting each other. And in fact, when Constantine uh, won, he fought against other emperors. So this, the, the, the Roman Empire almost dissolved in that 60 year period. And uh, in order to, to cement the, 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 the empire, uh, the emperor started to look at religion as a glue. And so there was a, a general uh, uh, centralized program of uh, persecution of the church, which refused to submit. The church refused to submit to, to the Roman uh, religion and to the worship of the emperor. It was short-lived, uh, five or 10 years, but starting with Diocletian in about uh, 290 and going to about 310, it was a serious, serious, serious uh, um, uh, persecution of the church because Diocletian realized that one of the ways you glue people together is by having a common faith, a common superimposed uh, tradition. Uh, so the notion of the church being um, rebellious was already there. Um, it was Constantine who flipped it. That was 325. Pardon me? Constantine accepted Christianity in like 325. Uh, in 312. So um, I'm just backtracking a minute. What I'm realizing is um, Jesus was not a rebel in regard to the Romans. No. It, but it, he was within with the, Judaism. Judaism. Right. 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 I mean, there he was. I mean, he was. I mean, the right. train yeah. over right. and stuff. Right. That's yeah. a rebel, and that's not. That's not a passive. And the Sabbath, and right. the Samaritans, that's and right. all, that. all, right. all of those stories about so, him saying. But, so, yeah. but, but for the Roman side, he didn't worry about that so much, I guess. And he did not foment Why? violent revolution. Why? Why, did he not? Not? Why did he not go after the Romans? <laughs> Why? 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 I mean, yeah. what? Right. I mean, what? That's sort of that wasn't his program. Yeah, I was going to say that, that that's not what that's not what he was about. He wasn't going to war with any group. He was presenting what was what was important. And he was Which Jewish, was, was, remember, with religion, not 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 social not politics. Or, mm -hmm. Jesus's intent was to change Judaism. Okay. To mm -hmm. reframe Judaism, mm -hmm. this notion of ritual purity and all the sacrifices and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. You, you, you're missing the point, Jesus said. The, 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 Got the out of hand. Purity yeah. that, so that, maybe with the Romans, it wasn't <laughs> an issue because they were so out of the ballpark that he wasn't. I yeah. mean, because they didn't even have the same God. Right. Yeah, they had gods. Right. Yeah, so yeah. maybe that was just like too much to take on. Yeah. It's hard not, enough to get. Uh, maybe not. Yeah. Not yeah. Even Did he even know the Romans? Pardon me. Did he even know the Romans? They were right there. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 No, There's yeah. no record of him ever encountering anybody except the story of his cruc crucifixion. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and Pilate's trial and crucifixion. Yeah. 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 Before then, but he wasn't bothering them. By the way. Um, it, it occurred to me because I'd forgotten this that term pater familias was, was quite common in England in certain strata of society. Uh -huh. Really interesting. So, Roman law was the law in, in the British Isles until, yeah. uh, until 500. 
But I mean, if you were the Duke of something or the or the or you know some some higher up, th that would be a term that was used. And, and, and in fact, the notion uh, of the father being in control of the family is very very strong worldwide. Yes. Mm -hmm. Worldwide. Now it comes down into these uh, what we now consider and, and understand this is modern Presbyterianism uh, and, 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 and liberal Protestantism in particular, um, that this notion of women being subordinate, uh, that is a sign that, that our rejection of that is a sign of the times. Mm -hmm. You're talking about thousands of years of history when it was just true. You didn't have to say it. So our objection side, I know a lot of people object to Paul because he said stuff like this in Ephesians, uh, and we, but it also is in Peter and now in Titus and, and, and the later. It's, it is part of the norm of the times. It was accepted. Pardon me? It was accepted. Not only accepted, it was the right thing to be in order to be in accord with the universe. Uh, the, 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 the standards of the universe, the way the universe is created. Somebody had to be in control. Everybody was under subordination from somebody. You know what I think is really cool about this yes. chapter two, though? Three times at least, I see, he talks about self-control. Yes. Just be self-controlled, mm -hmm. which is such a, I think, such a positive Absolutely. attribute of, of any... Yeah. level of person any strata of you know That's society he, which i thought was pretty interesting absolutely yeah. he yeah. wants these folks to be good citizens yeah. don't have folks looking out looking in from outside looking in saying that these are a bunch of rabble rousers. those guys are out of control right <laughs> but understand what we just read from, from, from about selecting bishops and elders you know there are some bad people out there, and some of them apparently in the church. Mm -hmm. So the church may not have been all that different in some respects from the external outside world, yeah. except that it was its 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 goal, its model was Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's a different kind of model. That's a different yeah, kind of, good point. Uh, and it's a different kind of model even today. Yeah. Right. And there are still the bad actors. In, there are in, bad actors in, in and outside the church. church. Right. So, mm -hmm. but it, it's because we're all human, I guess. But the truth is, you just can't do it without somebody being in, in, in control. So, as much as much as we dislike this notion that uh, there is a subordinating system, mm -hmm. uh, as much as we are offended by slaves, the, the presence of slaves. These are modern day sentiments. We, we, in these days in particular, we are renaming buildings. We are taking down statues of people who once were slave owners. Mm -hmm. um, and um, this uh, during the time uh, it was sta standard acceptance that slaves were accepted partly because there were slaves in the Bible in this country the, the chattel slavery was different from the slavery in the Bible right. but um, and so it was much different. Nonetheless, what we've done is taken what was acceptable then, and we are projecting our acceptance back on that. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with this stuff about women being subordinate, slaves being subordinate, etc. And I think we need to be very careful personally. This, we're not doing it all that well no. even today. Mm -hmm. So, well, it's also maybe um, that we still are. Um, I was just saying we 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 probably have 
um, we are slaves to some things, <laughs> not in the same way, oh, but yeah. you know, I mean, and also there is, we are subordinate to in ways that we may not even know about, mm -hmm. probably. I mean, um, sort of all over the place. Yeah. You know, right. In all different the, segments of society. Yeah, and there's so uh, still that, there's still, that, still those hierarchies. Yeah. Those hierarchies. Everywhere, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. As much as we yeah. don't like it. As much as we don't like it. Right. This, this, this hierarchy that is clearly there is in, in the New Testament is a soft hierarchy. Understand. Um, that of all the authority he could exert about uh, that, that the paterfamilias has, he doesn't talk about that authority to enforce or to be bad. He talks about the facts in some of these that there are bad slave masters, for instance. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, uh, he tells uh, Fathers and, right. and slave don't owners pray, don't to be good, don't to be gentle, right. Right. to support, to, to love, to deal right. gently with folks. Right. So this is a, a very soft, soft form of, of, of paternalism here. Yeah. What a good way to describe that. Pardon me? I said, what a good way to describe that. Soft. Yeah. I thought that was just a lovely way. Of she said, "What a good way to describe it." Oh yeah, it is. It is the soft side. Of it. it is the pastoral <clears throat> side because part of the the, the responsibility of the, the paterfamilias is uh, is to support, to nurture, to to generate to uh, a a healthy uh, system. Right. So how then? Let us. I think that's a great explanation. Now, how do we bring that into today? <laughs> I mean. In, within our within our church, within the Presbyterian tradition, what do we do with knowing that that's how it was? I mean, that's how it was. That's the context for all of those passages. The context is the Roman Empire. Yeah, right? the context is Roman Empire. And so now I'm asking, what do we do with it today? With those with those exhortations. Well, first of all, we don't we don't say women can't be in control. See, that's the wrong message to take out of this. That 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 that. Uh, I mean, it sort of directly says that. It says it. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's the, that's not the that that's required under this notion that somebody's got to be in control. And in the Roman Roman Empire, it's the power familiar. Right. See. That's the wrong message to take. That's a cultural message from the Roman Empire. On the other hand, there is a message to be taken here, which is gentleness. Hmm, that's a good one. For instance, there, there, there are some, uh, right here in Titus, there are, um, there are some reasons. For instance, older women, um, uh, in verse 3, be reverent, etc., so that they may encourage uh, the young women. So there's a function to this, mm -hmm. so that the older women do it as a, as a role model and as a teacher, and uh, and that they would manage um, the household and in, in verse verse five, etc., so that the word of God may not be discredited. And so, for instance, uh, in some of these. That's a good point. It's very strong. We read about it in the paper sometimes. Some of, some of the abuses of power by men basically discredit the gospel. Don't right, they? right, right. Sure. So the message you take out of this is whoever's in charge and whatever they do, don't discredit God. Well, well there you go. That's a good, that's that's a good way. See, that, that, there's a, that's the purpose that's stated down here. Um, no. And we see likewise about younger men, about showing yourself integrity, etc. Then, down in verse 8, then any opponent will, opponent will be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Mm -hmm. If we want to take something out of this, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. that's, that's yeah. the reason for this kind of behavior. Right, a model of good works. Yes. Uh, Integrity, gravity, sound yes. speech. I mean, these. there's so many. Yes, so, so that's actually, I love that. I, that's yeah. very helpful. And it's, that, even, it doesn't end there. Even yeah, in, down, down here and to the slaves. 
to not, and what we see is what's expected. Understand once again, that if there's some kind of a prohibition, it's not just out of the air, it's because there's something going on there, right? right. So you got all these things, don't do that. Uh, don't pilfer uh, and don't talk back and this kind of stuff. And it's down here in verse 10, so that in everything, they may be an ornament to the doctrine of God our Savior. Right. So that you can be a, an exemplar, a jewel, uh, something to decorate uh, uh, to, to, to Christ. Mm -hmm. um, and why is it, why is submission necessary? Because you just submit right. to God? First, first of all, if you get two or three gathered together, somebody's got to be in control. That's just, or according to them, or you don't. That's cost of first law church. For me, <laughs> or you don't have an organization. You don't have, you have a functional, individuals that functioning organization. Uh, even the most egalitarian groups, they may begin that way, but there there evolves very quickly. Some kind of hierarchy, a picking order. There has to be a leader. You don't think Pardon me? There has to be a leader. Well, there has to be some somebody to point the way. Yeah. But it's mm. for the good of the organization. Uh, yes. Yeah. Let me not for the good of the members of the organization. Well, it, you know okay. I mean? And, and th this, this, gets, this is where it gets complicated. The good of the members. It's ought good to, to outweigh the good of the organization, I think, but maybe not. I'm no. not sure. Okay, let's look at it this. Look at it this way: when an organization is dysfunctional or a family is dysfunctional, it's nothing goes on for the good of the members. When the organization, a church, is functioning properly, then everything is for the good of the members. If you're in a church afflicted with disorder, it hurts. Well, that's true. And, and, we and if people would just be submissive, that would all go away. Well, see, that's, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's the easiest yeah. thing. No, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's you know, right. It is. Solution it's to this problem to is just up. tell people to shut up and do yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, and matter of fact, that's, that's, that's kind of how the way works. I frequently, sometimes, frequently find myself in dealing with my children sometimes. Just shut up and do what you're told. <laughs> <laughs> The explanation is going to take a month. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. But because we have three little, then that mm. can extend to this type of, not just to making choices about what Jesus did or did not do, but it can extend on farther out. It seems to me that we should be free to either choose or not choose I think that's as good. long as it fits into what I try to live by the golden rule. And that too is up for interpretation. So you can't get away from people having different opinions and different interpretations. But if we present it to each other with kindness and love, maybe we can live together. Yes. Absolutely. That's what this means. And, and there reaches a point where a person's free will uh, to uh, uh, gives them authority of their own to resist the group, uh, even to the point of damaging it. And that can be a leader. Mm -hmm. That could be a leader or a member. You know, you got to know it doesn't take many members of the congregation to make the pastor's life miserable. I can tell you that. Oh, sure, that's true. Say that again. <laughs> it doesn't take many members of a church yeah. to make the pastor's life miserable. Right. Uh, and uh, so... But when, you know, when, when, when you say there has to be a head, isn't it true, like in our denomination, um, we don't really have a head. You have the pastor, the head pastor, but they are, but the session is really in control, and they're being controlled well, by the presbytery. Right? <laughs> it should be. Well, if they maybe. know, if they know what they, I, if they know again. what they're doing, and they are <clears throat> subject, if they don't put themselves at the mercy of the head pastor. Okay, right? that's a lot of ifs. 
<laughs> See, and th therein lies the problem. Good point. Right. See, we have, we Presbyterians do things decently and in order. That's that comes right out of First Corinthians fourteen, uh, and 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 we do that by putting it in writing and doing it in in, in rules and guidelines and all kinds of stuff. And you know, uh, when people ignore those, which they are free to do, yeah, uh, or neglect them, which they are free to do, yeah. then what do you have? Spiritual right. but not religious. Pardon me. Spiritual but not religious. <laughs> That's, you know, that's it. If that, you want to go on your own, you can go on your own. And you can go on your own. But if you want to be a part of this group, if you want to be a part of it, yeah, you're religious. So, yeah. uh, that's and, pretty and interesting. Yeah. I believe that if you want to have an impact on history, you got to be part of a group. That's what I know that I'm sure that that's you true. You can't, can't really do it on your own. You either have to be a part of a group or, or make one. Or an emperor. And well, it's over three well, then you it's over two group. people that person has to, it has to be a leader. You also said that, right? Uh, so that, that, right. And, and this, if we're going to take something out of these household codes and this household code, it's not the authority structure. Right. That's that's a cultural legal thing of the Roman Empire. And it's also a part of the uh, of the ancient world in general. Mm -hmm. We don't need that as to, to hold ourselves together. Rather, we need to take these other things, be gentle, treat people with respect. Right. Uh, that's uh, the right, that's right. the great, that's the wonderful. And we get hung up, song. we get hung right. up on the subordination of women. Yeah, that's, I think that's a good way of thinking. And it's a problem for the church. There is a uh, a whole big movement that's big in the Southern Baptist Church in particular, uh, which is uh, what's it called? Uh, it's a it, it, it's a it's a notion that the place of women that women cannot be leaders in churches right. um, and. and this is, uh, they, they put a theological label on it. Um, I can't, I'll think of it later. Mm -hmm. See, that's, and the Roman Catholics have it too. I think that's the wrong, that, uh, the Muslims have it. It's common throughout history and the world. I personally, believe that somebody back in the, in the, when things were bad with the Islamic Jihad and stuff, that it said it seems un, impossible to really have a society that's fully functioning when half of them can't speak. Mm -hmm. And frequently they're the smartest ones. <laughs> so, so that to, that that we, we damage ourselves if we try to suppress people of talent of any flavor. Mm -hmm. That's true. Exactly. So that's and that's the message that if you're going to conform to God's will, I think that's the message we have to have. And we can it's all this stuff about subordination of women. It that's just historic cultural yeah angle. i think that is really i believe that to be true i think yeah. you're right and i like your framing of it yeah. and so this is one of these we, we talk about what do you do with the bible right yeah this is we have the ability to interpret it uh and sometimes it's the question of putting the emphasis on the right syllable <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's we, we, we sometimes look at the wrong verses mm -hmm. uh, and we have the power as a church to do that and i think personally that the presbyterian church is pretty good at it i think we are doing a pretty good job uh, too yeah. not great but pretty good, pretty good yeah. um it, the parts that are frightening to me are the stuff that we really don't realize yet <laughs> that we don't understand our problem mm. which means you have to keep listening. So, okay.
Um, first, finally, I would also like to point out that all the stuff, and, and it's true in all of the other uh, household goals, it, it's in the context of Christ. Verse 11 to 13, 14. For the grace of God, and let's see, there's a four there. You do all the stuff mm -hmm. because the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. Incidentally, that salvation to all is not what everybody believes. Big debate in Reformed tradition is did Jesus die for everybody or just the elect? So, but this is for all. Uh, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions and in the present age to live lives that are self controlled, upright, and godly while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. It is He who gave Himself for us that. He might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Declare these things, exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one look down on you. So it's this model of Christ that is the uh, uh, that, that that is where it comes from. And Christ was not intentionally a horseback savior. He mm -hmm. did it in a different way. He did it in a different way. He did. So. Well, okay. that was a good one, Ed. Boy, that was a tough <laughs> one. You mm -hmm. did a great job. It was very think, helpful, very right? Helpful. It gave all yes. of us a no. way to, a better yeah. frame, a yeah. much better framework yeah. for this. Yeah. No, I'm glad I did. <laughs> I survived. <laughs> 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 and the organization well. <laughs>